because um, a claim of consequence is just that if you're trying to hold it in a, in a common law court or a court record, or you're trying to hold it in a tax court, and all of a sudden you realize they're shifting the jurisdiction on you, you go, whoa, 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 Why, where are you going with this? Bring it back over here to my court of the original jurisdiction. I have the original jurisdiction over here. I made the claim in this type of court. Why are you dragging it over to uh, admiralty or maritime or tax court? Like I said, if it was an Orange Schiff kind of guy, I'd say, oh, Orange Schiff should have filed a uh, suit in a, just a normal state court, because every state court is a common law court. And if they tried to use tax code on him, he should have said, "Whoa, why are you trying to drag my why, why are you trying to drag my lawsuit into a tax court, or why are you trying to use tax code jurisdiction or federal tax you know U.S. court tax court jurisdiction? Why are you trying to control my or answer my claim? You can't answer my claim under a code. I didn't write that code. I don't not going to hear to decipher that code." I'm just saying you had no right to administrate my property or my revenue or my sales or my books. You, I believe you have no right to do that. You know, I believe I have the right to contract with any other person on this planet, and the United States government doesn't have the right to interfere with that contract. And it's like, doesn't the Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, clearly say that the government can't interfere with a contract of between a man and, like, between the persons? So if I want to contract with Fidel Castro in Cuba, what right does the United States government have to interfere with that contract? Well, if I want to sell my book to this other man and we're making a contract and we're exchanging something, as something tangible for something that I believe has got value, who is the United States government to interfere with that transfer of property? You know, can somebody from the United States government come forth and say that you can, I can't sell my book to anybody I want? You know, and under the common law. Because the attorney for the government can't do it. A man who's been harmed by you selling your book to another man has to appear in court and say, well, because you sold your book to that man over there, I was directly harmed. Good. Show me. Give me the bill. Give me the bill of particulars, and I'll compensate you. But you can't just make a blanket statement by me selling a book to the general public is causing you a man harm. You have to show me. Is it destroying your reputation? Is it damaging your good name? Am I committing fraud? Am I lying? Am I committing perjury in my book? What am I doing? Am I slandering your good name? What am I doing? You're going to have to make a claim, and you're going to have to show me how you, how you were expressly damaged, not conjecture, not implied how you were damaged. You're going to have to show me the, the bills of the damages. You're going to have to show me. So like I said, when uh, the people um, ask me like the claim of consequence, I, I like that one because it's, a, it's an old one, and nobody ever does it. And uh, I think it's super simple. All it is is basically when, when and anybody, like I said, when uh, the governor for the attorney said to him, I said, in the first paragraph that the, uh, the district court wrote in first order, how many jurisdictions did he try to throw in that first paragraph? He said, four. I said, yeah, he tried to drag me out of the common law. He's trying to drag me under the United States uh, codes. He's trying to drag me into his personal jurisdiction. And he's trying to hold me, you know, liable to the federal rules of civil procedure. He's trying to bounce me out of the common law. And if he can get away with it, he's going to keep keep it up. He's going to bounce me all, all different jurisdictions. So like I say to people, when they try to, 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 to try to move you to jurisdiction, if you don't object, you know, uh, they're going to run you over like a freight train. It was like I say to people, it's like if you write the word like pro se or proper persona, and, that, and you start using Latin terms like in camera and stuff like that, they can answer you in Latin terms. If you're speaking Latin terms in your claim, they can speak Latin terms in their claims. So how would you like it if they put 1,000 Latin terms in their answer to you? Well, you're the one who started Latin. They're going to reply to you in Latin. And that's why I say to you, if you're going to say, well, I'm going to file a Title 42-1983 claim, well, they're going to give you an answer that just says 12B6. And you folks are going to be like, What's a 12B6? And they're going to like, well, you're the one who started with the number codes. We answered you with a number code. So if you want to talk in numbers and codes, if that's how you're going to make your claims, we're going to answer you in numbers and codes. So you better be up on your codes. Or if you say, well, I'm relying upon the Erie Doctrine to move this case, they're going to say, well, according to the feldman roken Doctrine, you can't. And they're going to say, but what's the Feldman-Rokin, uh, the Roker-Feldman Doctrine? It's like, well, 
any three-year law student knows it. They spent uh, three semesters on a Rockefeller doctrine. You should know it. You, you just threw the Erie Doctrine out of this, but so obviously you must know the Felk Roca Feldman Doctrine counters the Erie Doctrine. So if you want to throw the Erie Doctrine at us, we're going to throw the Feldman Doctrine at you. That's okay, our answer. Okay, stop for a second. Take a, take a breath. 